mass extinction events where most of the species on the planet die off have happened a number of times on the Earth. But there isn't always a direct and straightforward cause resulting in the extinction. This is the case with the Great Permian Extinction, also known by the more dramatic and actually quite fairly accurate title of the Great Dying. The event took place about 250 million years ago and very nearly wiped out all life on Earth, came especially close to wiping it out in the oceans. While from this distance in time it's difficult to be certain about what happened, we do have a very likely theory. Now about 100 million years or more before the Great Dying, first recognisable trees had started to appear on our planet. Being a wide variety of plants before the trees, especially in the oceans, and some of them grew to be fairly large, but the trees on land grew taller than any of the previous plants, in part because of their use of lignin. Now lignin is a complex polymer formed from hydrocarbons, and it's used in the cell walls of plants. It's extremely strong and robust, and in trees it's used extensively in the bark and trunk in the tree's water transport system. However, because lignin is strong and robust, the cells were extremely difficult to break down, even though the hydrocarbons that make up the lignin lock up a substantial amount of energy. It's meant that when the trees died, they were resistant to fungi and other organisms which normally recycled the nutrients locked up in things like trees. So for millions of years there were layer on layer of dead trees piled one on top of each other and being compressed by the weight of the trees on top of each other. This started the formation of the coal seams that we currently use for fuel in many parts of the world, except that rather than buried deep beneath the ground, this fuel was relatively close to the surface. Now coal, especially when it's only relatively recently been formed, is difficult to ignite. But once it's been satellite, a large seam of coal can burn for centuries and normally it's extremely difficult to extinguish. Currently around the world there are a large number of underground coal fires which have been burning for decades, producing a huge amount of toxic gas, including hydrogen sulphide in the process. Now part of the reason for the burning continues for so long is that generally only the open face or surface of the coal burns. As it burns, it sucks in the air to continue the fire, and coal ash falls away and exposes a new part of the coal seam, eventually over the years burning the entire coal seam. Now, taking us back 250 million years ago, this time there were large areas of volcanic activity all across the planet. More than 1% of the landmass covered in hot, molten lava. And while this would have reduced the light from the sun, created spiking carbon dioxide and pumped some other nasty gases into our atmosphere, it would have killed off a few species. These periods of volcanic activity do happen and new species fill in the gaps left by the previous species. The world rapidly recovers. However, this time a large part of the Earth's surface, as well as just beneath the surface, was covered in fuel, just waiting for some source to ignite it. And while coal is difficult to ignite, putting it next to molten lava will easily accomplish that. It's meant that even when the volcanic activity died down, the coal fires continued to burn. These fires had many effects. Three of the key ones were they dramatically increased levels of carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide in the atmosphere. At the same time, the fires dramatically reduced the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. Unlike many other extinction events, these conditions didn't dissipate after a few years. Instead, the coal seams continued to burn, possibly for hundreds of years. Increasing levels of carbon dioxide combined with the Heat from the fires and the volcanoes would dramatically increase global temperatures, which, when combined with a lack of oxygen, would meant a great many plants and animals dying. This situation would have been made worse by huge amounts of high, the gas hydrogen sulfide from the coal dissolving in the water, which in turn was made worse by the lack of oxygen, causing a rise in the amount of sulfate producing bacteria, again further increasing hydrogen sulfide levels, virtually killing off all life in the oceans. As life in the oceans died, it would release 
huge amounts of methane into the atmosphere, stepping up global temperatures even more. This dramatic rise in temperatures would have led to some previously wet areas becoming arid, not able to support a large amount of life. These conditions combine to create what's known as runaway climate change, wiped out most of the life which had still clung to existence. Eventually, however, the fires died down, the gas levels returned to a more normal state, and the temperatures started to cool. The whole range of new animals and plants began to fill in the gaps left by the extinction event. And into these gaps, some of the planet's most distinctive animals came into existence. The dinosaurs!